There's some mad shadows in this video by the way, so <laughs> woo. It's Halloween, I'm uploading a video today and obviously, because you're watching it, and also tomorrow as well. Another creepy one, because it's Halloween. <laughs> so you've probably heard of baked beans and green beans, Sean Bean, Mr Bean, but have you ever heard of Sonny Bean? Before I go into this story, make sure that you're subscribed if you've not already subscribed and click the notification bell if you want notified of when I upload and if you like creepy stuff like this then give the video a thumbs up. Cool. Right, Sonny Bean. In the 16th century, Alexander Sonny Bean was born. He was born in East Lothian and he grew up in a very hard working family. His dad was a hedge trimmer and a ditch digger and when Sonny Bean grew up, his dad was quite keen to get him in about this family business. But Sonny wasn't having it. He was quite lazy, he wasn't about the hard labour life. Well, he was quite hard working in the areas of cannibalism and incest, but we'll get onto that. But he wasn't into the jobs that his dad wanted him to do, so he ran away. He met a lovely lady called Agnes Douglas, who was known as Black Agnes Douglas because she was said to have a dark personality and she was also known to be a witch. Score. Sonny took quite the liking to her, um, possibly because she was just as messed up as he was. A match made in, well, hell, really. And they eloped. <laughs> so sweet. Some say that she was a quiet woman. Some say that she was really enthralled by his glowing, amazing personality and handsome, rugged looks. Just kidding. Uh, <sighs> Some people said that she was just awful from the get-go, which doesn't surprise me really, judging by who she picked to spend 25 years with. So they then led a lovely life of attacking people, robbing them, murdering them, cooking and eating them. It started off quite tame, a wee bit of robbery, you know, and then they moved on to murder. Why is there weird noises? Am I manifesting a cannibal? So the lovely couple decided that they weren't townspeople and they had to stay somewhere where they could carry on doing their thing, their wee murdery thing. They had to stay somewhere where they wouldn't easily be found so that they could continue their murders and human feasts in peace. Benin Head was where they lived, um, in a cave, and the cave was blocked off during high tide, so it was perfect to hide out in. And they lived there undiscovered for 25 years. <laughs> Goals! <laughs> I'm not joking, but I just heard something else. You are going to think I'm doing this because it's a Halloween video, but I swear to God. Anyway, so in this time, the couple had quite a few kids. <laughs> quite a few eight sons and six daughters to be precise and they also had 32 grandchildren all that were the product of incest <laughs> yep a family who slays together and lays together <laughs> stays together no no travelers were they were disappearing and people were getting suspicious but the bean clan were really careful with their attacks they made sure to murder and rob only at night they would ambush the people and then they would take their bodies back to the cave where they would then do the usual, you know, cannibalism stuff, dismemberment and snacks. Nobody was onto them until their body count, the murders, went into the hundreds. The sand on the beach was just littered with human body parts that they'd flung away um, and had washed up, which was a part of their plan. This way, people wouldn't suspect them. Especially since during this time, bodies of water were said to be where all the Scottish mythical creatures lived. So I reckon people were just maybe putting these killings and disappearances down to maybe mythical creatures. I don't know. Or animals, but more likely mythical creatures. Scottish people were really superstitious. As the number of disappearances increased, <laughs> searches were organised, nothing was found. One search actually noticed the cave, but then when they saw the entrance, they, they deemed it impossible for people to occupy. Like They, they just thought humans would never live in that. <laughs> Fools. Townspeople were in such a panic that innocent people were lynched in a desperate attempt for justice and answers. People had no idea 
that a huge family of ancestral ravenous cannibals were living right nearby and that if they walked alone at night they were a potential target and you just never know you never know if there's a cannibal living next to you things were going quite well for the family until a traveling fair came to the area a young couple who'd been at the fair were heading home on their horse uh, along a quiet lane not far from the beach when they were ambushed by a bunch of beans I'm not going to call them the beans, it doesn't sound scary. They were ambushed by a bunch of ravenous cannibals. Ooh. However, they didn't know that the man was an experienced soldier who was highly skilled in combat and was armed with a sword and a pistol. Unlucky. And he fought as much as he could against the clan. Unfortunately, his wife fell off the horse and was just mauled in front of him. The women in this cannibal family, they just mauled the woman, they disemboweled her, they sucked her blood, you know like the usual stuff. Luckily a big group of people that were also at the fair appeared on the lane and the family ran away. The man who survived the attack shared the story of what happened and the king, possibly King James VI, dealt with it. He led a search with a huge team of men and hounds and thanks to the hounds they found the cave. Oh, backtrack there. When they charged in the cave they found the family surrounded by human remains. The cave was a bit of a mess, a literal horror film. Decor of acquired taste, <laughs> literally. There was the smell of butchered meat. Possessions of the victims covered the floor. Body parts were hanging up in rows and there were barrels of pickled limbs. You wouldn't see that on Pinterest, I'm telling you. From this, there are two versions of what happened when they were found. The most well-known outcome is that the family of cannibals were captured and then taken to the Tollbooth Jail in Edinburgh where they were then transported to Leith or Glasgow and executed without trial. The men were castrated, their genitals were flung into a fire, their hands and limbs were cut off and then they were just left to bleed out. <laughs> really, I don't know I'm laughing. And then the women were forced to watch this and then they were burned at the stake. Another outcome says that the king was so disgusted that he got his team to just blow up the entrance with gunpowder and then the family suffocated. There's also rumours that one of the cannibal daughters left the clan to start off a new life in Girvan where she planted a big massive tree that was named the Hairy Tree. I don't know. And then when the cannibals were paraded through the town, her identity was said to have been revealed. Possibly the family acknowledged her and then the locals hung her from her hairy tree. Sounds weird. So whether this story is true or not, we'll never know. There's no evidence whatsoever to suggest that it is actually true. The cave's real. Some people believe it's true, some people say it's just a legend. There's no records of such a massive public execution. A lot of people that have been to the cave have said that it's not really possible for a family that big to have been able to live in it. But then if the gunpowder story was true, then surely part of the cave would have maybe collapsed in and that could be why it's smaller than what it used to be. I don't know. I don't know, man, I'm not an expert. Wes Craven was apparently inspired by the story of Sonny Bean and that's what he based The Hills of Eyes on. And what's the other one? Wrong Turn was apparently based on this story. Who knows? It's a great story. Don't blame them. Also, right, don't steal this. I'm going to copyright this, but I think people are missing out. Why has nobody, a possible there is one, but I think someday should open a coffee shop called, wait for it, Sonny Bean or just like have a coffee brand called Sonny Beans or Sonny Bean I don't know we'll think we'll think about that so yeah that is the legend of Sonny Bean Scotland's most famous cannibal if you go to Edinburgh Dungeons they have used this story for tourism <laughs> you'll meet Sonny Bean in the dungeon if you go also we Scottish Lass has a really good Sonny Bean video involving a little tune as well if you're interested if you're into these creepy videos I do actually have quite a lot on my channel I've been on quite a few paranormal investigations and some like creepy Scottish places so if you're into that then I have those videos but I did film just like one big chatty video of the scariest things that I caught on camera at these investigations and there's a whole video about it so if you're interested in that you should I'll link that below um, and I've put in all the, the really scary things that happened that I think could potentially be actual evidence again if you're not into that thing then obviously you don't have to but hope you enjoyed this mental story oh my back if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please subscribe if you're into this or not you don't have to and keep an eye out tomorrow for the next video which is ghost related i'll give you that clue all right thanks so much for watching and i'll see you later bye
dismember them and I'm not joking but I just heard something else.